Hi, this is Chris Allen with iGrill. We wanted to walk you through some of the step-by-step -step instructions on how to use your iGrill. And we wanted to take this opportunity too to thank you for buying an iGrill and becoming part of the iGrill family. So let's walk you through the actual iGrill itself. You should have got this nice little box here. We're going to go ahead and open it up and we're going to walk through what you've got inside. First thing is you'll have your iGrill device. We have a black unit here. This will be available come later in February. So you should have your iGrill. Go ahead and take that out. You also have a probe. And this one had a secondary probe that they ordered, so there's another probe. And you're going to have a package of four AA batteries from Energizer, along with an instruction manual. Now this is just a quick instruction sheet. You can find more complete instruction sheet directly on our website at www.igrillinc.com. The important thing to note up here is the key definitions at the top. It's going to walk you through what everything means on your actual iGrill. So we'll go ahead and look on the back here. We have a battery compartment. You're going to open that up. Go ahead and take out your four AA batteries that comes with it. We recommend using high quality batteries. Energizer, Duracell, Apple has some new batteries out there that are rechargeable. They're all good quality batteries that you're going to want to use. If the device becomes low on battery, it's going to alarm you on your app and it's going to tell you that your batteries need to be changed so you have the opportunity to change them. So we put our batteries in and now we test this extensively in California. So we'd like you to go ahead and clear all the Bluetooth pairings that may have happened in our factory prior to go ahead and going ahead and trying to use it yourself. So to do that, you simply push all three buttons at the same time. You'll hear a long tone and then the unit will light up and the Bluetooth uh, flame will begin blinking. When that goes solid, that means you have a good Bluetooth connection to your device. Okay? However, the iGrill can be used just as a standalone grilling and cooking thermometer. So we're going to walk through that in this video. So over here you have a probe insert. This is probe 1. I'm going to go ahead and insert this one in that probe. 76 degrees in here, a little warm today, but it's cold outside, so it's good for us. On this side you're going to have probe 2. So we're going to go ahead and put this one in there. Now, if you don't want to link it up to your iPhone, your iPad, or your iPod Touch, you can use it just the way it is, and I'm going to show you that now. If you push the plus sign, that's probe 1. It's going to tell you that with the P1. If you want to set an alarm on the device so you'll hear a nice beep, beep, beep when it's ready, you push and hold the plus sign, and you'll see an AL1 come up, and a little light in the corner blinking. Let's go ahead and set this one for 131. Once you let go of that button and you stop touching it for a matter of about 5 seconds, it's going to go ahead and disappear and you're back to your room temperature. That means the alarm set on the device and it will alarm once you reach that temperature. Now since we have a second probe, why don't we take a look at how we set it there. The second probe is accessed by simply pushing your minus sign. There's probe 2. You'll go ahead and push and hold your minus sign to get to the alarm again. There's your alarm. We'll set this one, let's just say if you push and hold it, we'll go to I don't know, 160. So there's 160. I'm going to not touch it. It's going to disappear, and that alarm for the second probe will be set as well. Now, when you're using it, you want to make note that you can hang it from your oven door. You can also stand it on your counter like I have it here, or you can lay it flat next to your grill. In addition, when you get this probe fully unwrapped, the probe storage is right here on the side. You can wrap it around the unit and store it right, nice and neat right there and put it away in your drawer, and you're not going to get poked by that sharp needle anymore. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to link it up to the iPad Touch, or the iPad, or an iPod Touch.